You are now listening to the HBCU Wall Street Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Aggies Excel. Today, we got my boy Tim Shropshire with us. What's going on, Tim? What's the word, my brother? What's the word? <laughs> man, we living life here. We living life, man. You know, just trying to trying to live up to that Aggies do mentality. That's what we doing, man. We making it happen. Hey, man, make- love it, man. Love it, love it, love it, man. How you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. Feeling great. You good this morning? Man, I'm rocking, man. Them babies wide open. So I'm gonna look, I'm gonna apologize now and warn y'all. Y'all may have a little two-year-old with a deep voice may take over the interview. You know what I'm saying? My son. Hey, yo, that's he got that look, he, he was born that pandemic. He got that COVID juice in him. He talking, he like, hey daddy, like, hey, hey, that's he cried like a grown man. I said, This is this this joke is different. So uh um, no man, I, I, I'm, I'm feel feeling you. good. I'm good. I'm good. Good, good. I feel you on that. I got a two-year-old, too. A two-year-old little boy, too, so I know how them COVID babies are different, man. They different. <laughs> they, they, hey, they, they all, that's all the only way I can think of. They just different. They just they different. different. Man, for you all that don't know, man, we have Tim Shropshire here for us. Let, let me just tell you a little bit about who he is for those of you all that don't know. Most of the world knows who Tim is, but Tim is a dynamic stand-up comedian. Um, he's a writer and an influencer who brings a refreshing dose of like clean and hilariously funny material to platforms or events. Um, so Tim has been, he toured with the legendary gospel artist John P. Key in New Life. He was also featured um, for several social media sensa- sensations like Kev on Stage and Desi Banks, just to name a few, um, who's who have tons of fans and followers online. Um, Tim has broken the internet with his home videos that have been viewed over 120 million times. That's that's a lot you know, of views. You know, that's, that's a lot, lot of views. Of views. <laughs> I, I just want that chick, you know what I'm saying? I yeah, hey, that's what it's all about. On top of all of that, you know, Tim has also done collaborations with, with major notable brands like Chick-fil-A and Church's Chicken and Biscuitville, the Blue Water, Newell Rubbermaid, and many more. So we we have, we, we, we got a star on the line today. We got oh, a, Lord. on the line. Let me oh, let me take Lord. this, Tim. The first time I saw one of your videos, and this was, I think this is the video that I think, if I'm not mistaken, like catapulted you in a lot of people's eyesight. The video was you talking about the chicken with your with your baby. Man, I laughed yeah. so hard at that video. I was yeah, like, that, that was the game changer. That, yeah. that was- that was a video that 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 uh that opened some doors for real for real. So yeah, good yeah, stuff, was, man. Good stuff. So Let well. me ask you this. So with Aggies, I always like to ask this: as an Aggie, when you hear the word "geho," what comes to mind? Man, shoot, boy, I make chills go through your body. What go through my mind? <laughs> I, I I just smell ribs on the grill. <laughs> the marching band is loud, and you know I cool. play football at T, mm-hmm. so I I I was in it, right we in it. You know, like you feel all the emotions, like mm-hmm. they're coming to see you play. You know, or coming to this environment, bro, brother, do do do. It's Jiho is the greatest homecoming on earth, bro. I mean, just simply what it is. It's it's hard to sum it up, and and that's the best way to say it. it's 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 electrifying, man. It's the biggest fan reunion I ever been to, and Absolutely. so uh, yeah, it, it's everything. I'm excited because when I ask that, I tell people, I'm like, listen, I promise you, you ask the real Aggie about G Hope, and there's a 95 percent chance that the word family is going to be mentioned. Family, a family reunion, like. And that's what it is, like a huge week-long family reunion slash party slash networking event with everybody's just showing love. Like the the most amazing experience I've ever had. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful, man. It's beautiful, man. Beautiful. Cool, beautiful. cool. Let me ask you this, Tim. Because so I love to laugh. I love comedians and I love to laugh. Like laugh is my favorite pastime. But when it comes to the art of comedy. Mm-hmm. I understand that you have to be so intelligent to be mm-hmm. able to take your life and present it in a way that's, that's funny. And that, I think the most amazing comedians I've ever seen, they're just talking about their life. They're talking about real life, real life events. They're talking about their their situation and being very vulnerable. 
Um, and so I give so much props to comedians. I'm like, you got to be a smart dude to, to, to take your life and frame it to a way that can have people's stomach hurting, just laughing at you. And let me ask you this. Have you found that being vulnerable has kind of elevated your comedy a little bit? Um, I guess uh, I feel like being authentic will help anybody's brand. And no matter what it is, no matter what it looks like. And so I think with telling your life on stage or through a screen, it's it it basically it just shows you how authentic everyone everyone wants a real thing. And so when they know they're getting real, they're getting truth, you know, and you know with comedy, you you exaggerate a little bit, but the premise of it is so relatable. You're like, bro, we got I, I yep, that happened to me. Like you said, I got a two-year-old too. I bro, I understand everything you're talking about. So um it, I would say yes in a sense, um has it has because uh, because you know we we enjoy the truth, man. We enjoy that's why reality TV is so big. Is because you know um, it kind of changed a little bit, but the origin of uh, reality TV, you know, or the beginning of reality TV, seeing that it was like, man, I get the inside scoop because Hollywood is so fake, and yeah. reality TV shows like, whoa, that, that, these these jokers just oh they worse than me. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, brother, yeah, yeah, that's real though. Absolutely. I, you know, I can definitely attest to that. Even in, in my career, I found the more, and it was never that I was fake at all, but sometimes I feel like I was, in my early on in my career, I was trying to be something that I thought was successful, trying mm -hmm. to, and when I was just like, I'm just going to be me. Like when I just decided just to be me, like I'm not trying to do nothing or be nobody but me, I saw things change dramatically. And it was just like, wow, like this is the key to it. And it wasn't like, again, it wasn't like I was being fake, but I, I, saw success and was like, well, maybe if I do this like this person and do this like that person. But that's another reason I love your comedy so much because it's so authentic. Like, you're just you. Like, you're not trying to be like this person or trying to be like that person. Mm -hmm. You are just you. And I think people relate to that and they love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's all we got. I mean, I'm working on the, my new, my, my special now. We're, we're, we're tightening things up. But, you know, one of the things I talk, I talk about the pandemic and I talk about that, that one month we came around to that I ain't, it won't look too good financially. Like, I ain't got, I ain't got no more left in the tank, man, you know? And I talk about how I got bailed out by an 80-year-old lady. And uh, we talk about, and it's, re it's the truth. It is so funny, but... But uh, we, we, you know, it's 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 cool to go down that road, and um, but it, it again, it helps you to be relatable. I love people, man. So um, you know, I love being on stage, but after the show is my favorite part because you get to talk to the people, and they say the same thing, like, "Oh my God, you telling my life, or you tell my your daddy's story." Like, yeah, I talk about my mom was diagnosed with cancer and all that, like all of that. Like we we just you know, so that's the beauty of being a storyteller, and um, and you get to reach people in a different way. So. But we have fun. We put a funny out of it. So, yeah, brother. That's good stuff, man. That's good stuff. Now, with you being an Aggie. Yes, sir. Um, can you tell me what did a t do for you? And I'm asking because a lot of people are like, yo, a t is the place where I grew up. a t yeah. taught me so much about life. a t taught me so much about responsibility. When you look back at your college career in Aggieland, what did it do for you? Uh, it definitely shaped me and mold me. It, it, it pretty much, it gave me everything I needed to where I am today. Um, uh, you know, a and I, I, I would be the first to say, a um, and wasn't my first choice. I was that athlete coming out of high school trying to go to Georgia, Clemson, Florida State. You know, I'm trying to play big time football, go to the league. That was the thought, you know, um, until I lost all those scholarships, you know, because, you know, things happen in school. And uh, Auntie came out like the last minute and offered me a scholarship. And I was like, oh, OK. And I went on a visit and I was like, oh, shoot. And going back to what you said earlier, I felt the family environment, the family, the culture. And I was like, whoa, I ain't feel this at these other schools. And right. uh, and um, and so it, it really shaped me and mold me. Um, I, I lost my scholarship in my, my junior year. I got kicked off the football team, had a 1.4 GPA. I tell this off stage too. I had a 1.4 GPA. I lost everything. Um, but A and T said, hey, we gonna we gonna pull that money back. Uh uh, but we still want you here. <laughs> we, gonna, we gonna work with you, baby. <laughs> but we can't give you no free money. <laughs> we can't put you on scholarship, no more. <laughs> you gonna have to pay for your own book, baby. <laughs> you gonna have to go to the camp and pay like everybody else. I said, oh, oh. <laughs> they said, we still here. We, I still love you. <laughs> and so Auntie showed me that tough love 
but they still want to be there. But they show me that tough love. End up getting my scholarship back. End up being a chaplain on the team. End up getting hired to work for the university six months after, uh, you know, graduating. And I end up having my first, you know, full time job at ANT for five years working in the Mitch's office, talking about this great school called uh, North Atlanta ANT State University, the same school that had a one point four in. I was able to recruit students to come into ANT, so it showed me everything. And mo I'm, seriously, and uh, and still to the day, we still do work with them, contract work, speaking engagements uh, from comedy shows and all that good stuff. So, man, they they locked in. They they so ANT everything to me, man. It's it's, it's yeah. I That's go good. On. Let me tell you, I can relate to that because I remember at one point in my college career. The, I just say the party ain't got the best of me. I, my, I, my. At one point, like I really wasn't too keen on that going to class thing. Yeah, like, come I, on. Yeah, on campus, but you know, <laughs> I remember one semester. Yo, when you said it, I was like, yo, I've been there. I remember I got my 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 report card. That thing said one point five. I was like, yes, sir. Yes, at the sir. time, I lost my scholarship too. I was on a, a academic scholarship. Lost my scholarship. Uh -huh. Every, I was just like, oh, life is over. But, you know, I had to fight my way back up. I had to, you know. That conversation with your parents. Hey, that conversation with your parents. Like, oh. you, you was doing what? What? You got a what? what? How did you do that? Like, did you even yeah. step foot on, on campus? I was like, yo, what? I understand you. That yes, uh, it shook me. It shook me. I was embarrassed. Like, I ain't going to yeah. tell nobody. But you tell me. My my church was giving us a little hundred dollar scholarship every every uh every every uh semester. <laughs> my daddy said y'all can hold on to that at the end. He ain't gonna be back at school. Like they don't want that. No, don't worry. Don't put it in the offer. Just put it in the offer. Just put it in the offer. <laughs> I said, oh no. <laughs> <Lord." laughs> Let me ask you this, Tim, because being in 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 your field, being what you're doing, like you're doing great. Like I'm proud to see another Aggie doing so great. What is the favorite part of your career for you right now? What do you love the most about it? Uh, one of the things this right here, connecting with people, man. I realized if you never step into what you call to do, you're never going to tap into or reach the people that God called you to reach. So it allows you to, you know, have these conversations. Uh, it allows my family to explore, you know. You know, they we just got back from Tampa, you know. So I took the family to Tampa um, for the weekend for because we had shows in Tampa. Uh, that was two weeks ago. This past weekend, we was in Virginia Beach. So, um, I know my wife, we got four kids total. So, there was in, you know, we were in uh, Virginia, uh, Virginia Beach. We're doing Orlando in a little bit. So, they get a, they get a, they go on to Disney World for two days. We didn't even tell them, you know. So, um, but that's because the, the luxury of doing shows on the road and, and, um, and it maximizes that family time. So, I'm all about family. That's probably why I love AT so much. But, I, I love, I love family, man. And so uh, spending time with them, it gives me that flexibility to do that. And, um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's everything for that, bro. And it just, I love people. So it goes back to, I get to make people smile, happy, um, right. um, be able to reach folks. You know, I did, I was in, after, after the VA show, um, cause we did, what we did, we did four shows in Virginia, Friday and Saturday. And then early in the morning, I flew to Louisville, Kentucky, did a show. They were like, you ain't tired. I was like, I'm tired. But, dude, you did you see that crowd? Like, do you see how they felt after? Like, let's do it again. Run it back. Like, let, like <laughs> I love it, man. I I love it, man. I love just, yeah. I love being there for people, man, in that way. So, yeah. That is, that's an amazing feeling. I haven't been able to do it on that scale. But even just as a speaker, like, having mm -hmm. people come up up to me after I get out on stage, like, you know, you made such a difference and what you said just impact. Like that is everything to me because again, yeah. I'm a person too. Like I, I understand that my, my whole purpose in life is to help make people better versions of themselves. Like that's mm -hmm. my, that's what I do mm -hmm. through speaking, through my writing. That's what I do. And so when I see people becoming better versions of themselves, it's like fuel for me. Like it excites me. Like I that's really, and I, I feel like I'm so blessed in that, that, that way I really get excited when I when I see other people become better, when I see other people accomplish things. And so that feeling, I can just imagine, like being in a comedy show is something different. But when you're in there and you're laughing to your stomach hurting, when you when you can relate with the comedy, you're like, yo, that is me, that is my life. Because sometimes comics help you laugh at yourself. Because certain yeah. things 
may be a little yeah. embarrassed, but like, oh, you did it too. You've been through that Come too. On. Let's so get it. It, really, it really opens up a vulnerability, not just for you, but for the entire audience. And it right. helps people take them li- their lives so seriously or to yes. be so talented. Yes. But Real man, tough. you had the opportunity to work at AT. You've seen, you know, you've been there through school, you know, you see what it is now. AT, in my opinion, I'm so proud because it's grown so much. Like it's changed yeah. so much. Oh, it's still yeah. the same university, but it's changed so much in a positive way. Mm-hmm. When when you look at that change, I know you're proud of it. But what does it what does it make you feel? Like what does it do to you when you see that? Um, I, I'm just inspired. I feel like uh just AT in itself is a great teacher, you know, about how to live life, how to do things. I love that it it represents excellence in so many ways. And so uh, it just it's a standard that AT has. And um and it, it it's it's a big teacher for me and my kids we are are able to see it um I'm I'm loving that when you we're on the road um I, I was wearing a, a anti you know t shirt in the airport you know where folks will come up to you they'll show you their stories you hear Aggie Pride my wife's from London England we were on a flight to London last wow. year and walking back out we were walking to the right the lady she was in the she went to the left she was she was she was first class praise the lord uh we, we had to go to the back <laughs> but all i heard was Aggie Pride, like what what and i was like we don't we going to london this Aggie. and i was like yeah. Aggie, Aggie, Aggie pride is, is nationwide man and so uh but yeah man ant is ant is everything man it's 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 everything man. I feel you. And I most Aggies that I've known, that I've known, have had that experience. Walking through an airport, a grocery store, it don't matter. Aggies are yeah. going to make it known that, hey, I see you. I see you. Yeah. Let, let me ask you this, Tim, because I know you stay busy. I know you do a lot. Like, you're a family man, so I know your time is split between, you know, building your career and still spending time with your family, still making sure they're okay. If right now I say, look, Tim, I'm going to give you $10,342. The only catch is you have to spend it. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> you you got to spend it all on yourself. Like you just have to take a weekend. You can do whatever you want to do, but it just has to be something you enjoy, something that's fun for you. What would you do? You can't spend it on your business. You just, it just has to be strictly to Tim's enjoyment. What would you do? Man, that's hard, man. I don't even know. I mean, I you know, a lot of them going to go back to the fam, go on a trip or something. You know, gotcha. but to to eat to even to spend it on myself to not even thinking about family, uh, to not do kids, yeah, bro. I don't even know. I it's gonna have to sit there. <laughs> it's, it's gonna have to sit I feel there. You. Yo, as, I, a, as a father, I feel you because it's like, yo, you almost feel guilty. Like, wait a minute, man, I can look. Take, yeah, bro, I can do bro. The kids, I can do this. But Dude. that's just the type of man you are, man. That speaks to to your I, values. I I know. I don't know. I promise you, it ain't no because outside of because for me, I, I'm simple, bro. I I don't I don't have many hobbies. Um, um, that's why people are like, man, you need time for you. I was like, bro, if you saw the hotel I stayed in Louisville, Kentucky, that joint was it was at the Omni downtown, like, bro. Mm. Google it. It was. I was like, oh, I felt uncomfortable. It was so nice. I said, <laughs> oh, so and I'm I'm like, Lord, but. Um, I get I get my my the the pleasure the time like just being able to to travel do what we do it's different when you do what you love to do then you have to do something that you really don't want to do and you're forced to it's like I'm, I feel like I'm living in a dream I feel like I'm living in a phenomenal opportunity so yeah man ten thousand man I I don't I'm a, I'll find something though but <laughs> I, but yeah. that, I even look at what I normally spend man I don't. Cause I'm not a shoe head. I don't, I don't, I don't buy the, the new ones when they come. I, bro, I'm so simple, bro. I, I don't go fishing, uh, you know, outside of comedy and family, I'd be chilling, dude. So I, I, yeah. I wouldn't, it may sit there for a little while. Uh, it may <laughs> sit there for a little while. Maybe take I, a trip somewhere. I don't know. I feel you, man. Look, I'm so, it, just as an Aggie, man, I'm so proud of you. So this whole platform, Aggies Excel and me working with Torrance and Jamaris, HBCU Wall Street, like I started Aggies Excel because I wanted to highlight successful Aggies. I wanted to highlight Aggies that were doing their things, that were making their marks in the world. So we started a couple of years ago. And then um, when Torrance and Jamaris and I linked, they were actually 
two of the first panelists on the first ever Aggies Excel. So we started working together and it's been, it's been such an amazing thing to hear Aggie stories. Like you see it from afar and you see what they're doing, but just to, to hear them talk for a few minutes about their journey, about, you know, them coming through Aggie land and then them doing amazing things in the world. It, it, it fills us up with so much pride. Like, yo, that's my university. Like that's, that's what Aggies do. And so again, man, salute to you. So proud of what you're doing. Um, and it's one thing, again, to see somebody successful, but it's another thing to see them successful and to be a fan of their craft. Like, I, mm. like, I, again, I love comedy. When things get stressful, yo, I'm pulling up the phone. I'm like, let me laugh for a little bit, man. Let me, let me see what I'm talking about today, man. Let me see what he eating today. Like, I, what he eating today? <laughs> what he eating today? <laughs> but, but I appreciate your time, brother. I appreciate what you're doing. Um, uh, my hat is off to you, man. You're you're right. You're living a dream. When you get to do something that you love and get paid yeah. for it, man, yeah. ain't no ain't that, it, nothing better than that. To do what you love doing and get paid for it, ain't, Come on. ain't no better feeling. Ain't no better man, feeling. It, it, it's, it's a blessing. I just did, uh, I did, just cutting up, I was doing the video on Martin Luther King while at Biscuitville. You know, I was like, I went to the draft. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> And shoot, this could be a reached out. I was like, hey, let's do a partnership. I was like, good morning, good morning, good morning, free and last, free and last. I said, I sure will. So I'm grateful, man. I'm grateful, Ooh. man. So I contribute that to an entrepreneurship class that I took in, at AT my last year, and it changed my life, man. And out of all the classes I took, that entrepreneurship class, I took my last class at AT, and uh, it changed my life, bro. So well, thank y'all for y'all, man. That's great stuff, man. That's great stuff. I'm again. I'm happy to see what you're doing, man. I look forward to more, man. Yeah. Even, um, even with the touring and everything else, like you're still putting out great content. Like I just, I, I give you your props, man. And we look forward to see what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. Definitely looking forward to to seeing this special. Whenever it comes out, wherever it is, like yeah, if I got to buy a plane ticket to see it in person, I want to, I want to be there. I gotta, Hey I man, we're I'm prayer for me, keeping your prayers and we're looking to film this fall, man. I'm taking the the just the, the best of what I've done over the years and put it in and put it into it in one hour and we're gonna film it and I'm gonna have an Aggie help produce it as well too. So it's uh we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna try our best. We're gonna do our best with it, man. So yes. Yeah. Man, good stuff. We looking out to now tell everybody how they can can get um find you and how they can get in contact with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Tim Shrop Comedy. So that's uh, my, my full name is Timothy Shropshire. So we we cut it into Tim Shrop Comedy. So S H R O P Comedy. And that's on all platforms. If you put Tim Chicken Wing in Google, you will find me. Okay, all right. Because I'm eating somebody's chicken wing somewhere. So uh, so uh, I'm not hard to find. Like what Dion says, I ain't hard to find. But uh, but yeah, uh, Tim Shrop Comedy on all platforms. Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all that good stuff. And uh, we just scratching the surface, man. So we got more and more to put out. So hopefully uh, we can help make you laugh, help your day get a little brighter. That's all. Absolutely, man. Well, we're looking forward to it. Thank you again for your time. Listen, y'all, check out this brother. Funny brother, man. Very <laughs> funny brother. But listen, we'll be watching you from, from now on, man. So I thank you again for your time. Look, this has been another episode of Aggies Excel. We'll holler at y'all. Y'all take we care. Know.